Hi guys and welcome back to Insomnia True Silver Championship. I'm your host Nimsh and I'm here with Noxious and Raven. Guys, how are you doing? That was a Colento versus Life Coach. It was amazing. 3-2, right? Like, uh, it seems like today we're getting a lot of long matches, but for some reason, they don't feel lengthy. Yeah. It's one of the rare cases, I guess, of, uh, of that happening. The metagame is so diverse, and you see so many new cards being added to those decks that suddenly they don't play the same. And Absolutely. It's, it's like new Hearthstone. Yeah. It's yeah, and, and seeing the, the amount of players experimenting with cards that literally came out a, day or, a couple of days ago now is crazy because you wouldn't blame anyone for taking like standard pre-new card decks because it's what they're used to, it's right. what you know works. Yeah. But nearly all of these players have at least put in, put in a Finley into the deck at least just to make it a bit more interesting. Finley even so Life good. Coach. Yeah, even Life <laughs> Coach. With the Finley Druids, so that was, uh, that was pretty cool. Yeah. And uh, the next pair of players that we have prepared for you guys is JJ, Super JJ from Complexity, your teammate Noxious. Right. And we have Boar Control, who is from UK, like you, Raven. Yeah. <laughs> Ni nicely so, done. Nicely, yeah. I like that <laughs> little tie-in. That was. So are we quite against done. each other now? UK yeah. versus Complexity. Yeah, it's your UK enemies. versus Complexity. I mean, Super JJ is carrying the team at this stage, so <laughs> you know, if, don't be too rough. Okay. Please and be kind. He did win versus RDU 3-0. So he's coming really strong. He, I think he went 3-0 in his two first series. So this wow. is the last one. If he goes 3-0, um, it's going to be... He will be through. Yeah. And, and also as well, Super JJ wasn't one of the invited eight players here. He actually came uh, and was playing in the tournament yesterday to qualify. So he's battled his way through a pretty stacked tournament to get one of the top six spots. Absolutely. And, uh, and now he's you know continuing to perform. So as you said, he's just on fire at the moment. It's insane. Like, it wouldn't surprise me if we see him get very far in this tournament. Yeah, he doesn't have to prove himself. He won no, the Story Cup. Yeah. He won the other tournament as yeah, well. He had time to win. And um, then at DreamHack Winter, he was super close. Uh, he. he he made top 16 and then got eliminated at some point. At some point, yeah, during it, I remember that. The, the salty words on Skype. <laughs> yeah, that's true, yeah. <laughs> that then, complexity chat. Board control? <laughs> Is he going into board control or more <laughs> aggro? No, it's obviously, uh, you know, it's there for the peddlers. For the no. peddlers. It's just the, the peddlers getting the he, boards. He's playing Warlock. Yeah. Um, but yeah, Ball Control, UK player, um, and he did quite well at the previous I series. He definitely puts the time into all the online cups. Uh, really good player, similar to, very similar to Ness, actually. Um, good players, put a lot of time into Hearthstone, always performs well, but just quite hasn't had the opportunity to shine in front of an audience and really put his name out there. Because winning all the online cups is fantastic and performing well in those, but to like the greater audience, uh, you know, other than people who actually keep up with the, on the, these online cups, no one will find out who you are. Right? Yeah, so absolutely. He's definitely put himself in a position now that he's, you know, well, he's facing Super JJ, you know, top of his game at the moment, and he gets to face him on stream. And if he can take this win, then he's going to be doing really well for I was, I was really surprised and happy when uh, I realized he actually made it to top 16 because I was um, following his progress when he was playing the NVIDIA tournament. And he went into that massive Swiss, and he was always on top. I think he made something like 14 and 1 yeah. overall in NVIDIA. So this is his chance. This is his f first televised match. And I'm looking forward to it. If he wins versus Super JJ, a lot of people can call it an upset, but for me, it will not be that surprising. But let's talk about the lineups, Noxious. There's the one difference only. Yeah, I mean, it's the Rogue. Uh, the Rogue and Warlock, I was talking to JJ earlier, and apparently his Rogue is kind of the, uh, like what he's most proud about, I guess, because he, he thinks right now it's in a very good spot. And uh, he says, I think it's kind of silly maybe not to bring that deck if you know how to play it. Right. Yeah, I if mean, you know how to play I actually it. ran into JJ this morning, so I ended up having breakfast with him yeah. at the hotel, and we were, we were just talking about lineups, and straight away he's, he just said the same. He was like, Rogue's actually a good pick for the meta at the moment. It, it, it really deals with a lot of the popular classes. And then JJ went, also, you know, Rogue is kind of my thing. Right, so, exactly. Uh, <laughs> so if I can take it, I'm going to take it. So I'm not surprised that he actually went with that decision and picked the Rogue deck. Oh, man, this makes me want to watch some mystery at good playing tournaments, but he is not <laughs> playing in them. Ever. Yeah, apparently. All right, guys, game is ready. <laughs> yeah, it looks like double eviscerate, prep, deadly poison. Now, against a paladin, I would not be surprised if prep was kept, exactly. Uh, and is it pretty obvious? Because prep is pretty much a, a card that you keep against everything, just because you need that tempo swing. Uh, the rest doesn't impact the board too much. You know, double eviscerate early, what are you going to kill? Yeah. Pretty much nothing. So just making sure that you keep your, uh, your potential combo. Yeah, uh, and on the uh, UK side of the board, We've got uh, the what looks UK to be side of the board. <laughs> what looks to be oh goodness! <laughs> oh, is this is, where we've come to? This is you did pick complexity yeah. side of the board. Yeah. <laughs> so um, yeah, this looks like could 
this be Reno Paladin? I mean, we saw Sylvanas, boom, Tyrion. Now there's another six drop. I uh, vote yes. And then Belcher, uh, Argus as well. This could well be Reno Paladin. In ball control, taking a debt like this to a tournament this important, I, I think is fa fair play if that's the case? And this is an absolutely strong assumption because Acolyte of Pain is not common in any other decks. Not I, anymore, no, for sure, no. yeah. It's, uh... No, so, I think this is by far the single most guaranteed Reno Paladin list. Like, just, just based on the hand, I can't even think of a single deck I'd run this in. Unless it's a, a new deck. Absolutely new deck. Oh, that was. Man. You know, we just got a new wing. Jankadin. We play everything. <laughs> <laughs> One of everything means I've got an answer to anything that can happen. We've seen some wacky decks. Maybe <laughs> it is Elise Star Seeker. Oh, deck. that's true. It's running a lot of bad cards, but then they change the legendary <laughs> cards. <laughs> Which are also bad, unless you get another Elise to then retransform those. <laughs> go, go again. Go again. Oh, uh, going full circle. I don't like these monkeys. But the oh, thing is, right. if you're ever going to put Elise in a deck, then it's going to be a deck like a Reno deck that goes long games and will yeah. actually you will eventually draw into the cards you I, need. I'm not even against the idea of playing it in a Reno deck. I think it's funny enough to include. <laughs> uh, but the thing is, how consistent would Reno be if you ever got to it and it ended up not working out? Like, if you got to the Legendaries and somehow your Reno is not activable, like activatable anymore. Or you didn't draw him, so maybe yeah, there's none in the deck. If the, what? what? After playing Elise, you can still get Reno. Well, multiple copies. <laughs> <laughs> Gang up that Reno. New metagame. Oh, no. Oh, okay. So, oh, so back so to sick. slightly more serious talk. This is going to be a good board play. This is going to be disgusting. Prep fan of Knives into Coin Edwin. Yeah. By the way, guys, so we talked about this matchup overall. Rogue is very good versus Paladin. How good it is versus the Reno deck? Worse, I'd say. You think it's worse? I'd say it's because worse because of the fact that if you don't get that... If you get damage in and it gets negated in one one fell swoop, then suddenly you're really far behind. <laughs> you have to go through another 30. Look at Board Control's face. He's like, Edwin, whoa. Fan of nice, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> I guess that's it. Rogue is JJ's thing. Um. So it's not exactly out of it yet. He um, definitely has some options here. Would you just say you just pass the Belcher and then kill the 1-1 one -one now just to slow slow the Van Cleef down a little bit? The, the problem with the Belcher is it doesn't really weaken Edwin that much. Do you think he needs to go for Lothab then? That's the, that's the, what I'm, yeah. I'm kind of trying to think about. Because if you go Lothab, then you, f let's say, follow it up with, you know, Hero Power, Cog Hammer, finish off Edwin. You take damage in the process, granted. And plus Lothab can't be sapped. Right. Well, and then so. you go for Dr. Boom on 7, which if sap falls, you don't really care because you just get another... You just play it again. Right, you replay it. So you can play Dr. Boom twice in one game. That's so good. It's good. It's good that he's actually taking his time because this is his first televised match. Yeah. And this is stressful, just sitting there with the audience watching you and uh, specifically in that seat. But he took his time and he made the decision, which uh, I don't know if it's correct, but it's actually interesting, right? Yeah. I think something that will help him is because he just grinds out the online qualifiers and the cups, then although it's com it is different being at a live event, and obviously playing against someone like JJ, but he's also had to play a million games of like important tournament matches. So at least that side of it, he'll probably have uh, under control. Yeah, versus JJ, where, where you can just feel the salt <laughs> coming at you. Yeah. As I'm I, I, if I was playing JJ, I would not want to sit too close. Because if like he gets angry, you just never know. They might see a monitor fly over. Well, I mean, the Super JJ is at least going to throw a pirate into what I assume is going to be Lothab. Because what this does is it safeguards Edwin, and suddenly you don't have to lose health on it. Yeah. And it's not going to be vulnerable to any type of board clear. And now he's questioning, do I need my dagger next turn, or can I safely go for the heals? How much is a dagger worth? In this case, not so much. Yeah, I think it's fine. And um, what you can also consider is maybe keeping Farseer to be able to heal Edwin. But then he really wants to play Azuchek next turn anyway. Yep. Yeah. Unfortunately for ball control, I will be surprised if we even see Kalthazar drop onto the board. Uh, at this I mean, point, he might be a little bit slow. It is a good, uh, it is a good drop. Not so much against rogues, uh, unless you've already you know, gotten sapped 70 times and then suddenly the, the Kel'Thuzad can do his thing. But it's a card that you can use in this exact situation if you have a Belcher that lingers, or even the Boombots yeah. coming back to life. Yeah. It's something ridiculous, but the Boombots against a Rogue are really dangerous. Yeah. Like, they, they really don't want to pop those, so... Here you probably just um, slam the Skygolem. 
Yeah, yeah. I think you have to, to challenge the Van Cleef, right? Because, again, Belcher doesn't do enough. It just dies to what's on board, and what's on board is still going strong, so... He, he seems to be anguishing about playing this. He's like, I'm gonna get sapped, I'm gonna get sapped. Or he's I'm just gonna, gonna die. It, it is the just best. Or getting, yeah, getting yeah, killed. Or, yeah, or losing the game. Well, that's one way to start. Does, is this six? Um, is, it, is it worth killing, though? Well, I mean, when you've got prep of this raid, you can yeah. at least consider it. So much damage as well. Oh. Like if you just go ninth face here, he could flurry yeah. if he really wants to. I don't mind going just full face and passing. Well, he could go face with the deadly point. No, you can't dagger up. Oh, he's not gonna yeah. dagger. Sorry, yeah. I like it. Just not using the tools because if you kill it, you can get something worse. Like you can get a water elemental. But look at this: the Aldor into the trade into the defender gives boar control a pretty good way to stop some of the incoming aggression. Blitz He's actually we'll deal getting with this. board control. Damn. <laughs> I was waiting for this one. He's not playing hunter though, so we're not going to see a huffer. So we need a pilot of shredder. Um, I can, what do we, what do we want out of the? What about control? do you do you really go Aldor? You can also go Cockhammer and just get a free kill right there. And then you Aldor the Drake. I, I would at yeah. least Aldor the Drake. Yeah, yeah. Because um, I'm not. You just want to reduce it down and also. You kind of want to play what you can this turn because he can KT next turn. You might actually trade away his board and then regain all the minions back again. Plus, you didn't see Sap. How good must that feel? Yeah. I actually wouldn't ha doing it uh, the other way around. Just killing the Azure Drake and then Aldering Edwin. Oh, Noxus. I'm what, sorry. What I'm Sap? sorry I ever said anything for oh, control. Biased, biased cast. Happy feast! <laughs> <laughs> oh no, and they said it was a nice emote. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Oh man. Is it worse than just saying hello? It is worse. Yeah, it's yeah, the it's worst the, yeah, thing. Yeah, it's definitely worse. Because it's the worst BM you could have. Like, it just feels. Because they said it with such a smile. It feels like everybody became Jaina when she says thank you. Like, yeah, everybody yeah, yeah. Yeah. smelled <laughs> like her. Super smug. It's like stealing a lollipop, lollipop from a child and saying Merry <laughs> Christmas. <laughs> it's like, what? That's exactly. What it's, and I, you know what? I have to wonder. At the office at Blizzard, did they think it was gonna sound nice to us? <laughs> because honestly, all I'm doing these days is spam that thing. I didn't use to spam that many emotes, but now I've gotten, you know, I've acquired the taste, and I wonder, and I'm scared that I may keep doing it after. <laughs> I just love it. It won't be as good afterwards, though. Once it's gone, it won't be as good. I wonder how they will do it for the future events, because what what, what other events are there? Like Noble Garden, Love is in the Air. I like love is in the air. It was like, I love, love you, air. and you scratch them in the face. Oh, it's so good. Oh, it's like Rexar saying, somewhere deep down, I still love you, and he just punches <laughs> you with a bow. That's, oh. a, that's a good love story. Still better love story than Twilight. Absolutely. I can't complain. All right, guys, the second game is uh, that rogue again versus Druid. Yeah, uh, usually you would say Super JJ's hand is pretty bad, but the thing that's interesting is the fact that the prep being already there means that any minion he picks up, he can probably secure by using spells. So it's not the most amazing hand, but Rogue doesn't expect to start with something optimal very often. I think he needs uh, more draw here, something like Azure Drake later. The thing is, he really wants a backstab, or like, a backstab is the best, because if Aspirant falls down, you don't have the answer, then it's really difficult. Uh, actually, Violet Teacher yeah. would be really good. Yeah. Speaking about the on 4 and then doing the preparation shenanigans. Yeah, from ball control side, how much do you actually like coining out the uh, Aspirant? Because you don't have anything to follow up with. Uh, the the UK side of things, well, let's <laughs> let's see what's happening there. But we're on home ground here, okay, so. <laughs> All right, um, so if you coin the uh, Aspirant, what I happens? Don't, I don't think it does very much. And no. that, that's kind of why, like, the threat of backstab may be sufficient to deter you from playing it. But the fact that Super JJ doesn't have it means that if it were played and there was a follow-up, the rogue would race, ahead, like, would just yep. race ahead. Now JJ is relieved. I, yeah, can, I can tell. That's a good card. He will be able to draw stuff and he, he is contesting things as well. Now you... This is awkward, do right? You, do you actually wrath for one here because you need to draw something else to play? I think turn? you might do it. It never feels great because you really want the wrath to kill off like the SI7 agents or help with the drakes. But, but you have two of them. Yeah, exactly. Because you've got two and you kind of just need to draw into something. Because now you, you, yeah, you're super You're playing into it. deadly poison. Yeah. But then you do limit the uh, mana bit. No, not really. 
Yeah, Deadly Poison is just dealing with this easily. I mean, as long as you have two Wraths and one Swipe, you're gonna get to turn seven for Boom. And if you get to turn seven for Boom versus Rogue, you can, make, yeah. you can probably yeah. just do, do something. <laughs> exactly, punish them severely. So that alone is probably why Boar Control was okay with just throwing the Aspire and keep the coin maybe for that uh, turn six Boom. Yep, yeah, um, now it looks like the Wraths are almost certainly gonna come down. Uh, Interesting. Yeah, he, he's roughing first. See what's happening. He needs cards. Like, he needs something like Pilot of the Shredder, Druid of the Claw. He needs to fill his curve. Oh, goodness. And that's not a great card for Bow Control, but a good card for JJ. Love Up is actually. It's not the worst, actually, for Bow Control. The fact that he's got combo already means that he can start playing with that knowledge. Uh, but he still doesn't have turn four, turn five. He has turned six with the coin. But that's what I'm saying. Like, he's playing, just based on so his if hand, he's playing... he gets to boom and follow right. up with combo? That's exactly it. Like, right now, his hand is pretty good just because he's guaranteed to get that combo and he's guaranteed to get boom early. Yeah. So the even though he hasn't been able to put pressure, that should be more than... Yeah, so, so now... Wrath Asp awesome, though. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Wrath Aspirant is nice. Um, just because, yes, it'll die to the weapon, but then there's the weapon gone. Deadly Poison's gone. So that's going to be pretty okay. Yeah. And then he can still cut in Thorison. Yeah. For the extra mana crystal, and then Thorison reduces everything down. So that Doctor so you're Paul actually can be still getting six. the benefit, yeah. Oh, wait. That does change things for JJ. Does it? Do you not just use the weapon anyway? I don't know, with the flurry, uh, it's... It's just because backstab's really good at, um, the backstab's good combo piece. Yeah, And I understand right. it, it you, you looks nice, but... Yeah, for sure. And you'd rather flurry with a, like, much bigger board. Yeah. And and the druid's not going to drop, like, three minions this turn that you want to flurry. That's the hope. Well, what druid yeah. is dropping is the Taurison. Triple innovate. And he has all the great cards, because the combo is being reduced. Swipe reduced, Doctor Bone Pass, and Show Floor oh as well. Yeah. Lore Control is in a great spot with this. Like the, the, the cards that this Emperor hits are all the cards that you want yeah. an Emperor to hit. Yep. And, and it, on the other hand, you are losing tempo. And if there's something like Eviscerate for Super JJ, that Thorison just dies, and he continues attacking with the minions. Yeah. yeah. The, the good thing is though, even though Super JJ's uh, seemed quite dominant in the match so far, he's done like no damage to the Druid. So it's not like this Drake is actually threatening, you know, like pushing him even further for potential lethal next turn. He's probably feeling pretty okay. And the Rogue does have to deal with Thoris in this turn. And as he said, he can follow up with Boom and then into whatever the hell he wants afterwards. If you oh look really close, Raven, goodness. you can you can see that there is one damage actually. Being done. Yeah, you know what I mean. <laughs> Virtually no damage. But this is scary because if you go for low Theb prep eviscerate. I called it again, by the way. Yeah, it's your fault. <laughs> I mean, you're you're getting. You could technically get like one of the most amazing oils if you wanted. Yeah, I think oil is fine here. Even though there was... Uh... Uh, he's just going to go for the cycle plus Lotha, which is also... Yep. Uh, it's actually even better just because you keep the burst from Eviscerate for the yeah. face. So. And Final Knives isn't going to do much more than that in this matchup, right? There's not often that you're going to be able to clear a big board versus midrange. Yeah, and the sap also somewhat helpful. Can you go for Dr. Boom or is it too dangerous? I think it might be the, the last moment where I, you have the chance to I go. think you might just have to play Boom. If you don't play it now, you're probably not playing it. Ever. And yeah. it, and the Booms, it's strong enough to swing the game back. Uh, it's looking really rough now, but those Boom bots, as we saw in the previous game of Life, Life Coach versus Clento, can sometimes just kill them. Yeah, especially game. with the Swipe, right? If they weaken them just yeah, enough yeah. that Swipe can clean them up, then that, you're good. And the thing is as well, if he ignores them, he has combo. So Sap is... Uh, Probably a necessity, but it's a bit awkward. You will not be able to sap weapon up and oil. Yeah. The most you can do is sap now, prepare your dagger up, or just... Uh, yeah, you have to prepare the dagger up and hope that you find something to play afterwards. So what are these boom boxes? You, you have to flurry those? That's, I don't think so. Nope, he's oh, not. So Here we go, pushing for it. Yeah, five to face. So how good's combo now? Uh, it's not that great. Like if you come, because do you need to do it though to guarantee the minions die? Well, you have seven mana. You can swipe, right? Combo is like twenty. With combo, and then you can follow it with law or boom, or even the druid of the claw charge. Because the boom bots might hit really big. That, right? That's a that's a great point. Well, with combo, you 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 feel like you're not dying. 
Yeah, with combo, you feel safe. You clear the board. The boom bots might do crazy things. Uh, and you have Druid of the Claw to follow up with. So, And the rogues doesn't play taunts. So I don't know. I think that's the best way to get Guar back into the game. It. Yeah, or, or, you'll, or you'll and you lose. I mean, swipe point. is kind of all right. Like, if you just swipe Lothab and then you play BGH from Tempo, you can usually get all that stuff to kind of stick on the board. But the problem is the safety is not guaranteed because yeah. the bots do have to hit. Yeah. Uh, I, I like this because it's much more manageable. Yeah, absolutely. It's probably the best. Boom bots. Oh. oh, okay. Oh, wow. Well, it's a bit extra to overkill, but why not? Like, that's, that's pretty okay. Yeah, now 12 damage. Uh, Super JJ is going to be wondering did he get double combo with that Thorson? Is Deadly Poison lethal? Deadly Poison would be lethal. This is not enough. SI, oil, go face, and then sprint. You just have to. Oil. Do you just, just oil first? Oil SI? Uh, well, you've seen Wrath, right? You've seen two Wraths. Yeah, the thing is, like, you deal two more damage. But the SI will do more the following turn. If it lives, but you're forcing yeah. him to play off curve, yeah. Yeah. A little bit. A tiny yeah. bit. If he has to Wrath, you've already seen the Wrath. You've so seen two Wraths, so you need to be Keeper. Yeah. Or lethal. <laughs> or that. Yeah. Okay, so now Ancient of Law heal and swipe feels pretty nice. Yeah, it's pretty good. You're you don't have the bridge. mana though, how do you do that? Oh, he's one off. Sorry, I you thought he was on nine mana. It, yeah. Oh, okay, he's just one off. And now an Eviscerate would do it, and he's got one left in the deck. That the poison would do it as well, actually. Oh, so you can just basically... Oh! 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 <laughs> that buys him time. That buys him. He's got to yep. stop. And yeah. then he pretty much uh, is able to just go in with the South Sea. South Sea Deadly Flurry. Yeah, exactly. Do you, because do you, you have to use your weapon now, don't you? Uh, you, you don't have to. Because yeah. if Druid of the Claw comes back, you can just Deadly and Flurry and deal, like, kill Druid of the Claw, oh, deal man. six to face. And re, re weapon. And you it. win, yeah. But the, the thing is, the Ancient of Lore, will it be played for heal? Because it's much better than Druid of the Claw. Yeah. No matter how you look at this. And does that prevent with you? Me. So we're talking so six, flurry. And he's got our armor up as well. Mm -hmm. No. Nope. But it does wipe the board. Yeah, you still clear the board and you And you can play even more minions after that. So. Well, with Violet Teacher. Yeah. I'd even consider Drake, honestly. I think it's a bit better even. If you find Prep, then you can go for Violet. If you find a Visceral, oh, you just win, right? Yeah, that's it, I think. It's five damage, yeah. One, Six two, and oh. Pirate, yeah, absolutely. That's even more. Yep. yep. Overkill. So JJ is winning another game for Exact. Oh. Well, he's got exactly though, right? Um, oh, no, with the South Sea. Yeah, yeah, yeah one South Sea is overkill. Please tell me you attacked in the right order. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> I thought he missed it. There yeah. we go. The Rogue again for JJ doing a lot of work. Um, so what's interesting is that I think based on what RDU told me, and he's in the same group as these guys, RDU went 0-2 to start with. Yeah. I think he's 1-2 at the end. Unless I, he I, won I, versus Borg Control, right. and he is 1-2. If, if AKA JJ Wonder loses versus um, Borg Control, and if JJ wins, wins versus Borg Control, then we have a three-way tie. Then we have a three-way tie, but it's got to come down to exactly this. And if JJ wins this, then RDU just might. Be able to make it. He was, Somehow. He's got like the Somehow. one chance to make it, and this is it. Yeah. Oh, and, man. And also, like, this is why different formats are interested in the game because JJ, who's like super rogue player, can actually sit on rogue if he can win and just use that leverage to his advantage being a specialist. Yeah. And it's like it's something we don't see in Conquest, of course, where if you win with a deck, you win with it once and that's it. Whereas Last Hero Standing, he can just show off how good he is at rogue. And Absolutely. it's really cool to see that as well. And he is in great position with that rogue right now. But uh, the hand from board control is decent. Ooh. I mean, you could tap on three and use the one drop from Peddler. Yeah, so this looks like Reno luck. Yeah, I think he's trying to fetch that Reno ASAP, but does this really accelerate it at all? Maybe he tries to make the Drake as big as possible. This can still be Malilok. A what, sorry? Uh, Ma Malilok with Malagos. Oh, uh, oh yeah, that's Malagos. Nims. You're on form today, with guessing those next cards. You're right, it is. Well, I, I guess, guess the I whole deck. <laughs> yeah. All right, all right. Well, you know, we learned at DreamHack that everybody had Malilok in their lineup. Right? Yeah. But they just decided not to bring it. Only Purple did. And that seemed to go well for him. That's that's actually true. Yeah. Everybody had Everybody Paladin. Everybody said they had it. And decided at the last moment, well, I'd probably bring Paladin. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> everybody made the same call. Well, Board Control brings the Malilok, and what does it mean? Malilok versus Rogue. I vote for Rogue. 
biased uh, biased again. Yeah. Says, uh, I think Mali Lock's better. I think Mali Lock <laughs> overall, the only edge it has is the healing that's in it. But that's common to all Warlocks that play a somewhat slow slow style. It's not so much Mali Lock as much as it is Warlock decks. I, I think that. it's um, it's an okay matchup. It really depends on the draws at the moment. But uh, if you get the Guardians, if you get Belchers, if you get uh, Blackwing Raptors, you can actually pack a lot of pressure in the early game. And then Rogue will not be able to kill you, will have to deal with the minions. Yeah. And at some point you do have the Malagos combo. And as you mentioned, heals, like Brown Bronze Beard plus heal bot. Yeah. It's a ridiculous way to just stop a rogue. Yeah. yeah. And the thing as well is the Malilok has really good AoE options because a lot of their minions are quite high attack, so the Shadow Flames are really powerful. And it's just consistently clearing the uh, the minions off the board. Unlike when we saw the Druid game previously, where the Druid struggled. When there was the Lothab and the uh, the Azure Drake down, right. it required for you know it re required combo to guarantee the kill. Whereas uh, you know Maligos with uh, the Dark Bonds, even Soul Fires if needed to actually just remove the minions. Because I think the longer the game goes on, the, the more advantage goes to the Malilot because the Rogue just runs out of damage. Yeah, absolutely. But on the other hand, Preparation Sprint was huge for Super JJ. Yeah. Right now, he has all the options he wants, so he will have really strong turns. But this Belcher, like, let's talk about the Belcher in that rogue deck from JJ, because it's not something you see in most rogue decks. Uh, oil lists don't all run it. Yes, of recent memory, it's kind of come back, but you still see the occasional deck where just there's no Belcher, and those tend to be the ones that you see the most for some reason in tournament play. So seeing the Belcher here really makes. Uh, oh. Oh. Puts a stop hey, to this is really nice. It's gonna say the mortal coil for two is gonna be awesome. Yeah, but he's he's doing what JJ wants, which is put stuff on the board so I can flurry. Yeah. And I hope that board control realizes it. Well, board control has the follow up with the such vulture from himself. Yeah, I think one of the issues is with Malilock. I don't think you can afford not to. Oh, extend, be, yeah. Yeah, be, because like it's not like Handlock where you have a mountain giant on and you like kill this mountain giant right now, kill this big minion now, kill this. The minions are very mid range. Like they're beefy and can do a lot of damage, but not just one by one because yeah. the, the health is low enough, as we can see with like the ma maximum five health on the Twilight Drake there. Uh, the, the health is low enough to just easily deal with on the rogue on a single basis or an AOE basis. So. I think the Mali Lot's just got to play a bit of beatdown at the moment. Yeah, absolutely. We mostly play the beatdown, and uh, he has ways to replenish the board if it's being cleared. So he's fine seeing one or two board clears, because in the end he will be playing those minions. Yeah. So as, uh, like he's got the option here of going for the double SI, you know, killing two minions with this. Or now that the Edwin showed up, he's probably thinking, is that worth it? You know, make it a six-six. Don't make it too big. Yeah. Uh, bigger is. In this a, case. And a lot of Miley Lock run double BGA. Yeah. Exactly. So, you know, you definitely don't want to try that. And now he can kill the Drake. He's going to take only four. So he's still in a good spot. As long as he can dodge very specific cards coming from the Malagos Warlock. And Edwin has to be dealt with in some way. There is no silence for board control at the moment. This deck mostly plays one. I, I, I've seen people cut it to, to just play one owl. So what can you do here? If you want to be super aggressive, but the problem is you don't have that much burst. War Control is only having this one Soul Fire, Malagos, but no Thorison, so no combo for now. He will have that uh, Soul Fire on turn 10, but turn 10 is far away. So for now, he still has to play the board control game. Very good, Nimsh. I expect nothing less. <laughs> expect nothing All less. that talk is led to that one <laughs> last. Streak of words. So he's gonna try to check for a soul fire. Oh, he picks one up. Yeah, the options were corruption, power overwhelming, and soul fire for you guys that are watching the stream. Yeah, Pio is, Pio is pretty good because now he has more burst. So he might be thinking about swinging. I makes pedalist so good. of Argus face, or do you implosion and try to trade? He, he might full clear here if you want, but oh, that hurts. Well, it's not perfect, but he at least can draw a card with coil. Yeah, but how afraid are you of Blade Flurry now? You've seen... You actually had a good board that can die to Blade Flurry, and and it didn't. Yeah. There was uh, just fun of knives. And the thing is as well, although it's, it would be unfortunate if the Blade Flurry came down now and cleared the board, it's not the most high-value board There are no weapon either. buffs, guys, there's right? Like, there's not too much going well, there's on. Not, there's none right now, but I mean, Drake Flurry on its own cleans up most of this. So I would at least... Well, especially because he has two of them, right? Yeah, he doesn't need it that much. And with Lothab, he might be able to secure a turn where suddenly pushing for lethal is just in the range of possibility. Yeah, I think the Drake 3 is actually not bad. But then, what do you really achieve for that? You just kill a couple... Wait, what about Flurry 
Uh, no, that makes no sense. If you flurry first, then you go for the uh, eviscerate. Well, there we go. Never mind. He's doing it. <laughs> you just if, watch it. If, if you do this, <laughs> never it's mind. A play. Yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. Never mind. That is, it it kind of played itself. I yeah, guess. that's that's good <laughs> call. Max. Good call. <laughs> I didn't say anything. <laughs> oh. Well, you notice this the same play as JJ at the same time, mostly. Yeah, but I'm not the one in the tournament. <laughs> you know, when I have perfect information, it's easier to make th those calls. And I'm also not on the clock. Um, and you're not that salty. As oh, no, actually. Well, you, you would salty. be surprised. <laughs> you are a salty person, yeah. He watched my stream once, and he said, you're the only person I've ever seen who matches me in salt. <laughs> so I guess at some... That is a compliment. Deep from down level. Yeah, I, I guess so. <laughs> <laughs> oh, goodness. Okay, so the Corruptor came down then to kill off the 3-3, which it does look good for ball control, but this Van Cleef is still untouched. It's just getting so much work done. This low sub is really scary. Yeah. I mean, look at this. Again, the, a really good tempo play. Just lock the spells, sap the minion, slam face, and JJ is positioning himself perfectly here. Blackwing Corruptor and Defend of Argus do kill the Edwin, though. Oh man, it's like it's so awkward with would, nine would you, mana. Would you Blackwing Corruptor run the Imp Gang Boss into the uh, Blackwing Corruptor Lothab run the Imp Gang Boss in and then Defender of Argus? No, you have, you to, have to Defender to. first. Otherwise, you can't kill the Edwin unless you want to kill Lothab. No, no, yeah, that's what I mean. Sure, sure. Yeah, yeah my you bad. Kill Lothab and put the two, absolutely uh, yeah. two, a two two up and uh, and the Corruptor is taunted. It might be because the one damage difference isn't going to change, change anything much, too yeah. much, right? The extra taunt, however much. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. you're right. You're, you're right. And then he has actually placed on turn 10. Yeah, but JJ also has a Deadly Poison opportunity soon. Well, he doesn't this is, pick it up. is this just over? It's two damage with Azu Drake with the Wait, Fairy. Yeah, he just Drake backstab Backstab. And how much damage he has left. Like, he has to weapon up. Drake, Flurry, that wipes. That's two damage to the Leave face. Two, That's eight. Up. Yeah, so he's still alive, actually. I don't think he's got... Yeah, I was going to say, I don't think he's got him, like... Oh. Does, killed just does yet. ball control need to d draw Bran now, realistically? Uh, Double heal ball oh, will do it. Yeah, okay. Double heal You can, you can do the other way of healing for 16. But if you do that, then you don't taunt, so you still take another 10 from the board itself. So do you really gain that much? You've yeah. seen two flurries, one Phantom Knives, so you know there's no more area. Oh. Please, your three threes will be tools for trading. Yeah, he can, yeah, he can heal ball, uh, soul fire power overwhelming. And clear. Mm -hmm. It good. cleans up the entire board. And now JJ has to deal 11 with nothing. Well, he has. Was, so if he, oh, yeah, he has so far, if he yeah. Doesn't throw the second heal bar. He could actually claw his way back into this. What do you even want to this card, Belcher? Uh, oh, that's uh, rough. What was I saying? Yeah, he that's rough. Throw? And now, <laughs> now I think JJ is just pretty happy to see that. I'm surprised he played the Chow, actually. Wouldn't you rather just throw away the Chow? I understand having the multiple minions for ball control. Probably just uh, <laughs> Soul Fire first. <laughs> yeah, just have a chance to throw the Chow away, because you'd rather throw the Chow than the heal bar, right? I, uh, yeah, that, I mean, that, that was sense. a confusing statement. <laughs> yeah. You all know what I meant. Look, it's okay when Nymph does it, when I do it. It doesn't work. No, it's just that I attended this amazing UK event, and all I have to show for it is dank memes. <laughs> I'll get over it, though. Oh, man. All right. The sprint is uh, pretty nice as well, because oh. he's uh, nowhere near dying, and he will be able to replenish his hand. And now for board control, this is the moment where he can try to take this game back. It's going to take quite a bit, though. He gets a soul fire, and he gets he it. He gets a soul fire. Unbelievable. Or abusive is, is abusive better? With BGA? It doesn't kill anything, though. No, I mean, abusive on the zombie child, it's trading for 4-4, four, four, and then just run the 3-3 three, three away. That's better, actually, by a long shot. And he can still squeeze the belt in as well. So he's just just holding on. But what does he actually need to win? I mean, another sap. Does, does JJ have another sap left? Uh, yeah, I, I think so. I, I don't know if he plays two, though. Like, he, he played one for sure. Yeah, I think we've, we've only ever seen one sap per one. game, right? There it is. Yeah, there oh. is so sap. he wins next turn, basically, right? With, uh, yeah. Because he can sap, and then he can play deckhands and just buffs. Yeah, I mean, Phantom Knight is now to cycle, see what you got. Yeah, and is there no more healing left for ball control? Oh, Maybe an Earthering Farsi here? One, but even then, yeah. is that enough? Sap, South Sea, Deadly, Oil, yeah. I mean, we're talking about a lot yeah. of burst. A lot of There shouldn't be more. Maybe low Have we seen uh, Lothab on ball control? Lothab is possible. And it is. 
not Lothav. Lothav. <laughs> it is noticeably not Lothav. Well, that escalated quickly. It yeah. seems like it's a free out with Rogue from Super JJ. And RDU right now is dancing a very <laughs> dance. Yeah. Unless he lost versus... Uh, unless AK Wonder ended up uh, winning versus Winning World versus World Control. Control, yeah. I have not asked, but... All right, so Super JJ, a convincing 3-0 with Rogue, which means that he is absolutely going through with three wins in the group. Yeah, and, and looking at just looking at the lineups very quickly again, Ball Control's lineup does get wrecked by Rogue. Yeah, and that's and something that maybe some players have like missed because Rogue's kind of been out of the meta game for such a long time, uh, and you can't build a last hero standing lineup that's good against everything. So you have to try and pick like the class or two. We saw similar to DreamHack. People actually said they built lineups. Uh, without thinking about Priest, because no one should really be playing it that much. Right. And then the players who brought Priest got really far. I think AK Wonder and Zetalot got in top 16 or top 8 um, with Priest decks, and they were just 3-0ing with it because everyone's lineups were pretty weak. So yeah. I mean, JJ went 9-0 total in his group. Yeah. He wins three 3 0s. Was it 9-0, like fully? The entire, he didn't lose a single game. He won versus RDO 3-0 with Druid. He won 3-0 versus Board Control with Rogue. And what was the first AK match? Wonder. 3-0 versus AK1. I think so. That's what I that's what I, I was told he went 3 0 against everyone. Let's make it the truth. Like even if it was a free two, it was 3-0 <laughs> yeah, yeah. anyway. Yeah, In my heart, there was yeah. a rogue. <laughs> Absolutely, 9 0. Uh, 6 0 was actually free as well. 6 0 won and uh, 6 0 has 3 0 score overall, so he is advancing to tomorrow as well, I believe. So pretty good tur tournament so far. Yeah, it's really through Silver Championship. Got uh, nothing to say. It's good. I've loved the matches. I, I can I'm kinda sad that we haven't seen the the Tomb Pillager from JJ? Yeah. He's uh, playing Vulture instead. And yeah, exactly. He's playing more defensive cards. Uh, maybe the second sap. I'm not sure what he removed or what people remove typically. Usually it's Shredders, but we didn't see Shredders. So it's got to be more of the minion. Uh, we see two Farseers, I think, though, in his deck. Yeah, so he so, has a different build. Right, exactly. A bit more healing uh, than Stability other people. Stability with like Vulture and Farseers. Yeah, it makes sense. And it, and it works because he is winning versus those, those players. And he is an excellent rogue player himself. He is uh, streaming a lot of Rogue yeah. as well. All right, guys, that was a pretty quick and a pretty fun match. Uh, for you guys, we have a lot more matches coming. I, th I think we have two or three more matches, actually. Yeah. Three more. Uh, oh, no, maybe two more. Maybe actually. maybe actually two more. Yes. And um, we'll update you as well what's, uh, what are the standings, who is through, who is not through. So don't worry about it. We will have all the information when we come back after a short break. So stay tuned for more Hearthstone.